This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. A huge conspiracy to sell human organs has been uncovered. A doctor kills a five-year-old child due to her ignorance. And is Cambodia a good place to retire to? We start with our headline story. Three Bali immigration officers have been arrested for organ trafficking by Indonesian police. That is to say, officials were trading in human body parts. And at the center of this trade was a hospital in Cambodia. For there, the doctors were harvesting the organs to be sold on the black market. The Bali immigration officials sent victims to Cambodia to sell their kidneys. But these are not the only arrests in this vile trade, as authorities arrested another 12 members of yet another crime gang only one week ago, including a police officer and another immigration officer, who stand accused of smuggling a staggering 122 victims abroad to sell their body organs. The three Bali immigration officials arrested this week are accused of working with an immigration officer who allegedly took bribes to allow victims lured by the trafficking ring to easily pass through immigration checks and then go on to Cambodia to have their kidneys removed. A Jakarta police director has said that at least 18 of the kidney donor victims left Bali for Cambodia between March and June alone, but the total number runs into the hundreds. Some of the members of the gang are in fact former donors themselves who became recruiters, using Facebook and WhatsApp to lure in new victims. The organ trafficking ring has been operating since at least 2019, earning over one and a half million dollars. The traffickers themselves receive $13,000 for each kidney. And with this money, they were able to get the surgeons at a hospital in Phnom Penh to illegally cut out the victim's livers. So the question is, why? Why does someone lay on a table and have an organ cut out of themselves? And how much is it in fact worth? Well, as we know, the traders get 13000 apiece, but the victim gets just 3000 And they lay on that sterile table because they are that desperate. They need to pay off family debts and loans. They have run out of all options. And when you have nothing left to sell, you will sell your own organs. It is tragic to think of the level of desperation that these people have sunk to, to willingly mount that surgeon's table and to allow such a barbarous act to take place. A couple of weeks ago, I told you of a tragic tale, one where two unbelievably evil people took revenge on an innocent woman. The assailants were a male and a female. The woman believed that her husband had been talking to the other lady too often, and she had become extremely jealous. So she set out to murder the other woman, and to do so, she recruited a local man, telling him if he helped her carry out this crime, she would allow him to rape the victim before they killed her. But that was not to be the end of it, for a baby was also to be killed that dark night in a most horrifying way. For the baby was killed by the woman stamping on the child's head and chest. And this week, the murderous pair were sent back to the crime scene to reenact exactly how they carried out this most unspeakable of acts. This heartbreakingly tragic story revolves around this small hut, this mother, and the tiny infant she's holding in this picture. Take 
a closer look. It is so important to understand this tragedy that you look as close as you can at this woman and her small infant, for it is them that it is all about. One night, that small hut went up in flames, and local villagers dashed to try and offer some aid. But unfortunately, they could offer none. And when they looked inside after the flames and the smoke had died down, they found two dead bodies, one of the mother and one of the child. And they thought they had died in the inferno. But what they discovered later that morning was to horrify each and every one of them. What the locals did not know is this woman and this man had worked together and they had murdered both the mother and the small child. After committing a crime so horrific, it beggars belief, they had set fire to the woman's heart in a vain attempt to cover up this most vile and disgusting of crimes. They were led back to the scene, and they were told to reenact what they had done that night. Both murderers were led back to the scene of the crime, but now it was not the dead of night. They were exposed by truth and by daylight. On the ground, you can see the scorch marks of where the hut once stood. The police had placed an identical bed in the exact position where the other once stood. And on it were two mannequins. One to represent the woman and the other was just a doll that represented the small baby. The woman was handed the rope and she showed how it was placed around the victim's neck and the male showed how he held her down and potentially raped her at that time. But it was only then that the most horrific part of this reenactment was to take place. The woman picks up the small child from the bed. She lays it on the floor. And then she places her right foot squarely on its face. Her reenactment is so precise, she leans forward to put both hands on the bed so she may apply her full body pressure to this infant skull. She crushes the child's skull. And as a final move, she puts her foot on the child's chest and also crushes that to make sure that this baby will never breathe again. So if you want to know what evil looks like, it looks like this, an everyday person, somebody who had convinced this man to help her to execute two wholly innocent people. The victim was so poor, above her was just a thatched roof, below her was not even a mattress. The only thing that she possessed of any value lay right next to her that fateful night, and that was her baby. But both of them were to be killed by two people that were so cruel and so evil, they knew nothing but their selfish Revenge. Just one story on our crime desk this week, and it is the most unlikely of killers. Unfortunately, we continue with yet another child murder. But the murderer this time could not have been a more unlikely suspect. For the woman who killed a five-year-old girl was none other than the family doctor. But what was to be discovered was she, in fact, was no doctor at all. For she had for years been portraying herself to be a learned woman, one of medicine. But with just a little investigation after the child's death, it turned out that she had absolutely no medical training at all. 
But she had lanced the child's skin and given her multiple injections. But it was those injections that stopped the child's heart and killed her. And if that is not enough, she then, rather than aid in any inquiry, went on the run. A quack doctor is on the run this week after a child died in her care. The health ministry has said it is waiting for police to catch the fugitive fake doctor so they may take legal action against her over the death of this five-year-old. The incident happened in Kampong Chang province. The mother of the child had taken her own kid to the doctor as the child had developed a very small cough and a slight fever. The unlicensed doctor gave the small child two injections, but they triggered a very adverse reaction. The little five-year-old girl suddenly developed extreme breathing difficulties, and the fake doctor then looked at the parents and told them that they must take the child to the provincial referral hospital for emergency treatment. But it was all too late. The child died en route. The suspect is a Mrs. Thong, a 45-year-old woman who for years has been practicing as a doctor when she has absolutely no medical training. But here is the tragedy to this tale. The referral hospital was only a short distance away and the child Keep in mind, only had a slight cough, but the fake doctor injected this kid so she could charge the parents more money, making the problem look oh so more severe. So the child with the small cough had her lifeless body carried to the morgue because the parents did not take her to the local hospital and instead went to a woman who valued money above life. And for the mother of that poor child, she will have to live the rest of her life with the regret of the path she took that led to her baby's death. That is more than enough murder and mayhem for one week. So let us look at the subject of retiring in Cambodia. Is it a good idea? Retiring in Cambodia is a discussion point that has been going on for decades. But is the kingdom an attractive option for retirees? I myself have lived here for over 15 years, but the first 10 years don't really count because I was drunk. I fell into that common trap that so many do, cheap never-ending booze mixed with sunshine. And the next thing you know, I was being resuscitated in A&E for my third overdose. It was then that I decided to stop. And when I did, I discovered that the place I was living in, in fact, was worthy of the name, the Kingdom of Wonders. And many others are now discovering what it took me a lost decade to find, and that is, Cambodia is a really good place to retire to. The Australian Institute for Economics and Peace annual study, measuring a nation's stability, ranked Cambodia 73 safest out of 163 countries, which is pretty damn good for a country that is still very much developing. But these reports, of course, always need to be taken with a pinch of salt. But it is true that overall Cambodia is relatively a very safe place to live. Crime is predominantly only opportunist thieves. What is much more likely is traffic accidents, as the driving here can be best described as colourful and imaginative. Another report by International Living publishes lists of the best places to live or retire, and they name Cambodia the cheapest place to retire for the fourth year in a row. They say that the options within Asia, Cambodia is number one for its relaxed atmosphere, its stable political climate, and of course, its cost effectiveness, which is a polite way of saying it's as cheap as chips for those of us who come from the West. 
and what with dental care and health care taking great advances in the last few years, it only seems to get better. I myself think it won't be long before some savvy entrepreneur realises that there's a lot of money to be had by building retirement villages. To harvest that pension money that us Westerners have as a guaranteed income each and every month. It literally would be an untapped gold mine. And surely, dedicated retirement villages are not long in coming. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. One of the stories that almost made it onto the show this week was the severe flooding that has happened across the country, but it didn't quite make the cut. And if you look at the chart, you can see why. It is raining and raining and raining. It was late coming this wet season, but my goodness, it has come with force. This has been the Khmer Times News. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next weekend for your weekly roundup.